last week we had a thrilling, exciting finish to the race at Spa Francorchamps. The races in the Formula Renault 2.0 series, they are now moving on to the sand dunes of Zandvoort. And it's Friday night prime time here on Racebot TV with iRacing Live. We'll be coming up in just a few moments. Welcome back then to our Friday night primetime coverage here on Racebot TV, streaming on iRacing Live for the iRacing Formula Renault 2.0 Championship. My name's Paul Smith, alongside me is Randy Chenoff once again with Hugo Louis on the cameras. And well, as I said just earlier, Spa was an absolutely thrilling, exciting, dramatic finish. Will we see some more of the same? We'll have to wait and see, but uh, Randy, Zandvoort here in the Netherlands, it's a different track and uh, a completely different challenge for the drivers. Yeah, it's really a completely different approach to Spa. Spa is somewhere where, although there is a lot of high speed corners, you definitely want to get the car trimmed out due to the long straightaways such as Kemmel and the run down to Blanchemont. Here there's not so many long straights, just the long, uh, long front straightaway. And you could say the run from turn 3 to turn 6 is a pretty long and high speed stretch as well. But here we're going to expect to see some high down court setups and uh, expecting to see people maybe get a little bit more strung out than we saw at Spa. Absolutely, so uh, the driver's just on there qualifying at the moment and uh, Stajan uh, sh uh, Schottenhorst is at the front there, I do apologise. Um, <laughs> I've completely butchered his name so I do apologise there. Uh, with Julian Rodriguez Moreno currently in second place and well, it's rather cool conditions. Okay, we've got, um, we've got mostly cloudy conditions and well the track temperature is 72 degrees Fahrenheit so uh, rather cold, cold track conditions for the drivers today. Yeah, I'm sure everyone will be uh, loving the cold conditions. Zandvoort is uh, stereotypically slick, and with the cooler conditions, that'll get the grip up a little bit more. And uh, like you said, um, actually, Luzenhorde just picked uh, Short Horse for uh, for pull. Let's be honest, this is going to be a rough race for us, Paul, because we have Dutch corner names pronounced, and some of these uh, some of these driver names are not making it easy. Absolutely, we will battle on through because we are professionals after all. But yeah, Martin van Luzenord here at the uh, the top of the time sheets for the time being. Uh, well, they've got two laps to set the qualifying times here. Uh, you're looking at around 1 minute 30, 1 minute 31 lap uh, for drivers. As Sebastian Job just sticks one in there, a 30.5. So Seb Job... Show the, uh, and Show Tours picked Luzenord as well. As yeah, did Moreno. So, well, this is it. With the Formula 2.0 car, you seem to get better and better times uh, as you go along. It's usually about seven or eight laps before you see the fastest laps being made, but uh, these tyres take a little bit of time to warm up, so uh, we may see Van Luznord, if he gets a good run into the, this final section, uh, he might just be able to pip them. But, uh, well, just getting a little bit loose on the exit of uh, turn 12 there and now through 13 onto the start and finish straight, heading down towards the start and finish line. Will Van Luznord be able to improve his time? The answer is yes, he will. He goes top of the time sheet for the time being. The drivers are just finishing off their uh, qualifying as Paolo Moua. Uh, Moua goes to the uh, top of the Four time sheet now. Four thousandths of a second faster. That's fantastic. It's showing that we have got close action here. You look at that, the first two, as you say, four thousandths of a second. 
third place is only is less than a tenth behind them, so uh, it's really close times there at the top of the leaderboard, but uh, well, all the drivers pretty much uh, finishing their uh, laps. That is Paul Im Ilbrick still out there at the moment, but he's currently in 22nd place with a 32-0. And uh, we'll just wait for a couple of these drivers to finish their lap times before we go through the grid. But uh, certainly this, this track, as you said, it's, um, it's not the high-speed track. It's a more of a high downforce circuit. But there are a few blind apexes around here that uh, can catch a few drivers out. Yeah, there's some corners here that are very, very, very tricky. you got uh, Chevac, Turn 6, that fast downhill uh, right-hander, as well as the uh, Turn 7, 8, and 9 sequence of corners, Marble, Renault, and Vodafone, they're all difficult, as well as the Audi S and uh, 100, there's, there's really a lot of difficult corners here, and the thing here is that there's a lot of corners that uh, lead into another corner, so you really, the way you get through one corner builds into the next, and it, it really is a very good flowing circuit. Uh, very, very tight though, and it's, it's a track that a lot of drivers I know really do dislike. As uh, Ilbrink improves his time there up to 18th for 31.4, so uh, an improvement from him. I'm just seeing if uh, there's any more drivers out there. Rob Reed is there, so too is uh, Joel Coez is out there, and he's just coming around towards the end of uh, this, uh, this this technical section of the track. As you said, turn seven, eight, and nine. It really is uh, a tough part of the track to get right. You can lose so much time through the section of track. Yeah, he certainly can, but Joel Goez, or Joel Guez, rather, he's a master of technical. I'm sure people have uh, used his timing at before, so uh, this might be right up his alley. It'll be interesting to see if he has enough time to get this lap done, though. Uh, not much time left in the session. Yeah, absolutely. Only about 15 seconds left on this uh, Actually, session. he's on lap three. He's already ran his qualifying lap, so he's just warming up. Ah, right, so he's just uh, going around doing a bit of a warm-up then, so... Uh We'll look at the uh, starting grid then for them, and it's uh, Paul Moore at uh, pole position with Martin Van Loosnod second. Sebastian Job is in third with uh, Schottost in fourth with uh, Julian Rodriguez Moreno in fifth place. Tony Rep 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 Repoussard, I do apologise ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Ian uh, De Vreed is in seventh with Justin Brunner in eighth. Jordi Lopez Jr. in 9th with Mark Perez in 10th place. And, uh, well, just looking at that top 10, you're looking at those sort of first six drivers all in the 130s. They're going to be the ones that we'll be thinking could possibly get the win today. Yeah, they certainly could, and it's, it really is going to be a tight grid. We have, I believe, the top the top 19 cars separated by a second or so in qualifying, so it really is very, very tight. Um, Martin Van Leeuwenhoorn is going to be one to obviously look out for, our winner from Spa last week. And what's interesting to note, for those who saw that, uh, that amazing end-of-the-race battle um, at Spa last week, our P2 and P3 fighters of Wyatt Gooden and uh, the Graham Carroll are actually not here today. Yeah, absolutely. So we're just waiting for the drivers to uh, grid up here, getting ready for the start of this race. And it should be uh, an interesting one. It's always a tight, tight run through this first section, through Tarzan and to the turns two and three as well. It's always very tight that start the race. So uh, hopefully there won't be any incidents here, but um, you never know with this track. Yeah, that, that's certainly certainly the case as uh, we're getting ready to go to the start. I think turn one and especially turn two and three here at the start is going to be where we need to watch for early incidents. Yeah, so the driver's now getting all ready at the start here for this race. It's a, uh, a, uh, a 19-lap race here, and, uh, well, it's going to be interesting. There's going to be uh, plenty of action here. 25 cars on the grid. As they all get ready for the start of this race, the lights are going red, and we have got green, and away we go for the start of this race. And it is a good start from pole position for Mui, but, uh, well, Matt Van Luznod is right behind him. We've got jockeying for position behind as well. Are they all going to make it through this uh, turn one through Tarzan? The car's running wide, still making it through, though, so uh, good work from everybody there to make it through one. And uh, into the turn oh, two, we we've got a spinner at the two. back. Uh, Justin Brunner is involved there. There's a few more involved at the back as well. And, well, this is what we feared would maybe happen. And it has happened here today for Justin Brunner. Uh, also, Simon Purvey involved in that. And uh, Joel Guez in, is uh, running slow as well. Yeah, that's certainly a three or four car pileup. Uh, 
And like I said, turn two or three is where we really need to watch. The track really does narrow up there uh, quite a lot. And, and I mean, the track's narrow to begin with, and that it really goes to about one line, a line and a half in that section of the track, and they're trying to make it two, three wide. Um, definitely unfortunate to see an early incident like that. Uh, well, at the front, it's uh, Moai at, in front was Shorthurst has made it past Van Luznord, so he's in second place, but Van Luznord is looking to the outside in towards the Audi S, and, uh, well, he'll, will he be able to hold that outside line to then have the inside through the next part? Van Luznord getting close, they go and touch, and just to lose a little bit of control right behind them is Sebastian Job, and Sebastian Job will take the opportunity, we've got a spinner over at the back there, who was that, was that Filosa? I think it was, so he's had a spin there, but um, well, Van Luznord just uh, making a little bit of contact there with uh, Schotthorst. Yeah, he certainly did, and that, that, uh, that was a big incident actually between Mark Perez and oh, Silva. Oh, the spinner at the back! Who was that that went round there? I think it might have been Sam Sutton there. Yes, it is. Sam Sutton losing control there. He got a wheel onto the grass on the exit of that final corner, and it's so easy to do that. And well, the car just bouncing, lost control, did very well to, oh, just made slight contact with a the barrier there on the inside, but did well to, uh, to carry on there. At the start of this race, it's certainly been uh, been drama-filled compared to last week at Spa. We did, last week at Spa was a pretty uh, clean start of the race and pretty much clean all the way through up until the last lap. Here, there's been a lot more drama. It's going to be interesting to see how this plays out over the course of this event. We saw uh, Van Luzenhoort get into that early incident almost with Mula, or excuse me, with uh, Schotorz, and he really got him away with murder a bit on that one. That could have been really, really bad for the P2 and P3 hunters. And we've also got Moreno, he's dropping down the order all of a sudden, what's happened to him? He's had a spin, and that's coming out of turn 8, the Renault corner just goes over the kerb there, loses control of the back end, it makes the car jump, and well, he's going to come back on, but it's all the way down in 20th place now. Yeah, a lot of aggressive driving and right there, he, he, like you said, he took a bit too much of the kerb, the rear end jumped up on him, lost all that real, rear grip, and while... We mentioned it before, the cool conditions, there is a bit more grip than usual in this circuit. Still very, very slick compared to most. And Luzenord, he's looking, he's right up the gearbox now of shot as he, well, he has to protect that inside line into Tarzan. He can try and hang it out around the outside of Tarzan, but it's not an ideal line. And for the moment, Van Luzenord is having to hold back for the time being, but he's, well, he's all over the back end of this car and... Well, the more that these two battle, and the more that the leader has a chance to pull away, but Moor is actually being pulled in a little bit by second place man Shotters. Yeah, he certainly has. No one's really getting away here, and uh, we talked about it last. Oh, and they're, they're going to go side by side in the turn six and the back. That's a very, very rough corner to go side and side by side, and especially for the lead. Oh, oh almost off. Yeah, Shotters is off, but he's back on to the track ahead of Sebastian Job. That was uh, very close for Job there actually, but uh, able to carry on. So Van Luznord up to second, but going side by side through that turn six, it's not the easiest thing to do. And it just showed it right there. Yeah, there's a lot of aggressive driving going on right here right now. And uh, I, I would really see a lot, or I would really like to see a lot of these drivers just calm it down just a little bit. They're fighting hard, they're making mistakes. I think that was a bit of a silly move there by Stijan on lap two of, the, of this race to try to go side by side in such a difficult corner. And if you get it wrong there, it, you can just flat out end your race. I, I just don't. I just think that was a bit over aggressive for the early running. Uh, well, uh, coming through this final turn once again, and Van Luzenord has just pulled out a little bit of a gap. It's now a half a second gap ahead of uh, Schotthorst, so uh, it's done well to recover. As we look further back, the battle for uh, fifth place. You've got uh, three drivers battling away on it, round the outside. Who was that? Tony Repser has uh, tried to go around the outside, but here comes uh, uh, a ball look at the ball look back to it. I'll get this right sometime, I do apologise as well, he holds on to that 5th place, but Tony Repsur is uh, still in that 6th place, but Georgi Lopez Jr. now in 7th place, he's uh, looking all over the back of him as well, he's got a battle there, but at the front we've also got Van Luznord, he's closed right up now from 2nd place, and um, Paolo Moa is well having to hang on, locking up the brake into the Renault turn. And round they go, and well, still Van Luznord. It's not really an overtaking spot around this part of the track, but you can maybe make a move down towards the Audi S. 
Yeah, it'll be interesting to see the Audi S can be a difficult place to pass because when you're on the inside of one place, you're on the outside of the very next corner. So it, it is generally a single uh, a single line corner. We're actually seeing a bit of a four car breakaway here. They have about a three to four second lead, if not more, over Sembolski's as top four cars. And then we actually see another four car train just behind him from Tony Rupert all the way back to uh, Arjun de Vried. And on the run down to turn one, uh, Paul, Paul Amulo is going to make the move up the inside. Let's see if he's able to make it stick. And he is not going to be able to... Actually, no, Luthenhord made that move around the outside. Excuse me. Um, the colors are a little similar. I got it mixed up. Van Luthenhord went to the point. I think we lost Paul here with a little bit of technical difficulty. As Amulo goes to get shuffled back now down to P2. And Stephen Shortworth, who uh, really, after that early incident, worked himself back up well to stay on the rear uh, gear box for a while. It's amazing to see if Ludenhorde can uh, stretch out a gap here, Paul. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I'm back. Don't worry, you haven't lost me. Uh, Van Luznord then in the lead. Moore in second place. And they'll, uh, they'll be hoping to uh, keep up with Van Luznord because he does look quick at this phase of the race at the moment. We have got 15 laps remaining. Sebastian Job looking down the inside of uh, Stein uh, Schotthorst. And well, that's for third place. Sebastian trying to get that place and a lot of locking brakes there from Polo. To, uh, who's trying to make it through this section, this tight, twisty 7, 8, and 9 section, and well, the unloaded front tyre is Sebastian Job just having a look. He's uh, trying to make his presence known and uh, shot us at the moment, uh, keeping to hold on. Yeah, Sebastian someone who's, who's willing to throw it up the inside if he's there, or if he thinks the space is there, and, he, and he's thought about it a couple times on this lap, and actually Sebastian goes off. He pushes a little hard, gets a couple tires on the grass, luckily he doesn't spin, just loses himself a couple seconds of, uh, of time on the track, but I think that's just another case where we're seeing drivers really push too hard in these early goings for these early laps, and they're ended up losing themselves a lot of ground or a lot of spaces as opposed to moving themselves forward. Battle for sixth place, Jordi Lopez Jr. is trying to go around the outside here of Tony Repos Reposad and well, still going on but uh, behind them also you've got uh, Bruno Docker and uh, Ayan De Vred and they're battling away as well. This is a four car train here all for sixth place at the moment as they've gone through that twisty section and now through these high speed turns of four, five and six. Really, there's not really an overtaking spot around here but he's going to have a look anyways. Jordi Lopez Jr. down the inside. Will they make contact? No, they won't. They decide to just hang back for the time being does Jordi but uh, this battle intensifying for sixth place. Yeah, they certainly have. We saw a similar move attempted uh, from Showhorse on Amula, and that one ended up in, in tears essentially for a Showhorse. This one, they were able to get it done clean. Um, but these, this group of four cars, they're really fighting hard right now, uh, trying to scrap for position at all. As Jordy actually gets to run on Tony Rupsler on the on the outside, he's going to be on, on the outside of the Audi corner, but he's going to be on the inside of Hunter. And if he can hold it, however, he's just going to slot back in line and a uh, hold position. Well, we've seen how difficult it is to overtake there, and uh, well, uh, what was that position? Is that Sebastian Job has moved up a place, so uh, Kem, something's happened there to uh, uh, to uh, Shotters there. Yeah, he did. He spun problems. in the Audi S. The S. Yeah, that's car number twenty-one. He just self-spun. That was again, I think maybe. Uh, oh, he, the ca curb. he caught the Yeah, he caught the curb, and I think that's just another case. People just pushing a little bit too hard for every every little thing they can. They're taking some big risks right now, trying to get everything. And he's lost himself three to four positions in the process. He did really well to not uh, collect the uh, car of Kem, uh, Kem uh, Masi, because uh, that was very close there when he rejoined the track. But uh, able to carry on, he's down to fifth place now since so shot asked where he got up to second place at the uh, the start of this race. So just losing a couple of places, so he wants to just get his head down and just uh, get back in the flow of things and not let it uh, bug him too much, because when you make mistakes, generally, you make more mistakes trying to make up for it. Yeah, that can certainly be the case, and, and the last thing you want to do is make mistakes and then keep pushing hard uh, and end up making more, because really that'll just frustrate you more and more, and in the poker world, they refer to it as going on tilt. And if you go on tilt driving one of these race cars, you can see it has disastrous consequences. We saw for the first three or four laps, we had a four-car train for the lead, and now it's just basically uh, losing Horde and Mula, and the gap to third is up to six seconds. 
course we've got a replay of the start as well with cars pretty much staying out of trouble just a few uh, ended up with a few instants Justin Brunner and Simon Povey being involved I can tell you that uh, Stein Schotthorst has made it back up to fourth place now so he's made the position up Sebastian Job is trying to uh, break the draft there down the uh, the pit straight as they head towards Tarzan Corner and uh, well for the time being he's got a second lead over at Shotos but Job is 5.6 seconds behind the lead too. Yeah and, and I was just like I said I, I think that's a creature of the, the driver we saw. I think if they would have held position I think they, they would have been up there with Luke Hort and Mula and obviously you want to get around your competition uh, uh, if you can but sometimes you're better off just holding station and just uh, keeping tow with those lead pack because they don't have a huge um loser heard of mula they're not hugely faster than job Shahorse. they're really a good chunk of the rest of the field it's just mistakes that shuffled those cars back in the grid Julian Rodriguez Moreno trying to uh, recover after that early spin. He's got past Rob Reed at the uh, start of this lap and he's uh, all over the back of Cy Andre. So that is a battle for 18th place at the moment between those two. But uh, still, we've got the um, the battle uh, towards the front as well. We've got uh, Shot Horsters dropping down the field. What's happened to him now? He's in the pit. He's, he's had an he made another mistake. Take it away, around it. Hey, you're going through turn... Uh trying to find what corner that was. Turn that was nine. Turn nine. Yeah, the Vodafone, oh. the Vodafone hairpin. He got himself spun and a car got into him. I think that was the car number of... I'm looking for it. Of it Tony Rupster got into him. And that's just that's just race over for both of them. So we've seen... We saw Showhurst. I mean, he, he had very good pace. He qualified well. But in the span of eight laps, he's, he self-spun, I think, three times now and cost himself really a, a very good uh, finish. Bruno De Carmo also got involved in that. He ended up uh, making a little bit of contact there with Rappers with the uh, Rappers car, uh, just uh, mounting his car a little bit there. But uh, serious damage for those two as well. Uh, but uh, De Carmo able to keep going. But um, yeah, he's lost a lot of ground there now on the battle ahead. Of him. Yeah, def definitely. Uh Definitely not ideal for him. Um, he's going to be looking to battle back. As we look back towards the battle for the lead here, uh, Martin Van Leeuwenhoorn has been able to stretch about a one-second gap over Paula Mula, and we saw this at Spa last week. Leeuwenhoorn, uh, when he was behind other cars, he, he really struggled to be able to get past. However, when he did get past, he was really able to stretch a lead um, in a very consistent manner. He didn't make very many mistakes. And when he eventually got that lead at Spa, as we saw last week, he really stretched the gap on Wyatt and... Uh, uh, and Graham, um, and it looks like he's going to be doing the same here on Mula. Absolutely, um, it's a little bit more spread out this week than what we had last week. We haven't got the long slip streaming sections, but uh, still plenty of exciting action going on. We've got a huge train of cars at the moment. Says uh, down at the Audi S, we've got several drivers all battling away for tenth, ninth position. It's a long queue of cars here down to 15th and nights to 15th they're all covered by about three or four seconds here so uh, pretty close action further back there as one of the cars having a look down the inside who is that it's uh it's a white david jarvis on david onto jarvis. Uh, paul ilbrink paul ilbrink actually going through the audi, audi s here he was leading this train got himself a little loose i got cycled back these two positions jarvis is going to be looking up the inside here going into hugs and holtz and this human's gonna be on the outside. He doesn't quite hold it, and that's tight with the car behind of Klaus Ellenbrand, almost getting into the back of David Jarvis. Um, Ellenbrand had to check out, check up a little bit. Now Sebastian Filosa might be having a look as well as they run down in the turn six. And this is what happens. It's it's a bit of a uh, a knock-on effect. You have to brake hard to avoid an accident, and that just brings the other car behind you right into that battle. And uh, we're seeing that with Falosa at the moment, right onto that gearbox of Klaus Allenbrand at the moment. Yeah, the accordion effect definitely takes a, can take a huge effect when you get into these sorts of situations where you have trains of cars. Everyone has to check up, and sometimes there can be a big beneficiary of that towards the back, depending on if the timing is good. And a, and a good uh, beneficiary of this race right now has been John Allen. He's been able to get a little bit closer, and this three or four car train has turned into about six or seven. Um, you know, we're talking about a, a train of cars all the way from P15 up to about P8, P9. So really a, a six or seven car train here going through the middle of the field. And looking back up to the middle of the pack, Martin Van Leeuwenhoorn, I talked about him being able to stretch that gap at Spa in the past two lengths 
past few laps since I've mentioned it, he stretched the gap another eight tenths of a second over Paulo Mula. And Sebastiano Filosa is looking. He's going to look down the inside into Tarzan. It's going to be late onto the brakes, but not able to make the move down the inside, but still carry the apex speed. And they're going to go side by side here with Klaus Ellenbrand. And into this tight right hander, there's not a lot of room through this section. And well, they're still going side by side, just runs a little bit wide of the apex there. Not able to carry the speed through turn three there, so uh, through Hook and Holtz. But uh, still staying behind is Filosa. But these two uh, just battling away. And you feel that Filosa has got the pace. As looking down the inside into six now. Not really an overtaking manoeuvre there. We can we can see what's happened in the past in this uh, in this race uh, through that turn six. But at the moment Filosa just needs to be a little bit patient you feel. He's got the opportunity into Tarzan that's for sure. Maybe have a look into uh, the Audi S. Yeah, Filosa definitely has the pace, and I think he might be a little bit in Ellen Brand's head here. Going through turn one, uh, Filosa, what, as we got a car off, uh, who is that? It's Jürgen Frank. Jürgen Frank, who's actually the winner of that I race for Belgium race we, uh, oh, we he's hosted earlier on in the he's week. And, um, yeah, yeah he's, there was an accident between him and it was a red and green car of Lionel Gambit. I think Jürgen got a little bit of loose exiting the Vodafone uh, Vodafone hair, but oh no, there was no contact at all. That was simply a been my, my apologies to a Lionel. Yeah, absolutely. So Jürgen Frank there just losing control of the car. It's so easily done here, because as you said earlier, it is a slippery track, and uh, if you get on that power a little bit too fast, then uh, it can cause you problems, as Ilbrink is now battling away with Lionel Gambit. Uh, it's actually... Um, uh, Game has made it past, uh, so he's made it past uh, Game into uh, Tarzan there, so up to ninth place. And uh, Ilbrink, he's uh, he's on a little bit of a mission here. He's uh, he's been fighting his way through some of the crowd here, and he's now up to ninth place. Yeah, we mentioned it earlier going through the Audi S. He was leading the train and uh, got a little loose and, and lost a few spots. He's since been able to regain that. Um, it's, uh, it's interesting, though, to me that we, we've seen all of our successful passing moves happen down on the run into turn one, and we still see people occasionally trying to make it uh, too wide through turn six and occasionally into turn seven in the Audi S. This certainly seems to me the way the cars are working. You just want to stay single file and wait until you can get a good run off of turn 13 and then down into turn number one. So we have lost uh, six cars already. Simon Pover, Justin Brunner, Sam Sutton, uh, uh, Stein Schotthurst, uh, Tony Repsard, and Jürgen Frank all out of this race already. So down to 19 runners in this uh, motor race here. And we have seven laps remaining, so we're over halfway now. Matt Van Lusnord out the front at the moment, 2.1 seconds ahead of Polo Moue. Uh, with Sebastian Job in that third place, slowly gaining on him, but um, not gaining enough to be able to uh, make that gap up, you would think, towards the end of this race. Uh, Ken Bolt, that's it. Well, we said we didn't really mention him last race. Uh, he finished fourth last race, he's fourth again. Uh, so he's uh, on his own here, just uh, doing his own thing. Uh, Ian DeFred, he's in fifth place, 2.1 seconds behind him. And Jordi Lopez Jr. in sixth place with uh, Matt Perez right behind him. Yes, yeah, certainly are. This is really, I think, the close battle on track right now between Mark Perez and Jordi Lopez. We talked about Cam uh, last week. Well, we didn't talk about Cam last week coming P4. And again, he's he's really kept himself out of the drama, and he's gotten himself up to fourth. And really, if we look at this, he started P11 and got himself up to P4. Um, and really, I think that might just be a uh, the, the effect of the calm, cool driving style. The fact that we're not talking about him means that he's not getting into trouble. However, if you look at a lot of the names that have uh, run out, they're people we were really talking about at the start of this race that are now out of the race, um, such as Steiden Showhorse. We were talking about him the first four to five laps, and look where it got him. It got him a DNF. Absolutely. In this battle with Perez now, he's, uh, he's right up behind uh, Jordi Lopez Jr., and coming through turns 12 and now through 13. It's all important to get the run through here, to get that draft all the way down the pit straight as you head towards the uh, the Tarzan corner at turn one, <laughs> looking left and right. I don't think that's going to do you uh, much good moving about that much, really. You're going to lose a little bit of speed doing that, but uh, looking wide there goes uh, Jordi Lopez, but able to uh, stay on the track. I thought he maybe was going to run a little bit too far wide then. But uh, as I say, able to hold it on around this uh, turn three through uh, Hugenholtz uh, corner 
And while well, the front tyre, the front left tyre, it's unloaded there, it comes up in the air and just locks and just gives a little puff of smoke and uh, really, you know, it, it doesn't really affect the tyre wear too much uh, just doing something like that. Yeah, Hugenholz is very tight, but it is slightly banked, and because of that, that left side can really get unloaded. Easy to lock up there, or even just barely pick it up and uh, pick it up in the air. However, Mark Perez, we've seen him uh, harassing the mirrors here of Jordi Lopez, and we saw Lopez make that mistake in turn one. I think Mark here just needs to keep doing that. Just just occasionally show the nose. You don't have to you don't have to throw it down on the inside. Just show the nose, and I think he might be able to push Lopez into making another mistake. As right now, looking back to the front of the field. Martin Van Luzenhoorde has checked out. Paul Ilbrink has made a mistake down at turn eight, down at Renault Corner, and that's lost him the position. He just locked up, got onto the uh, on the curb on the inside, which unsettled the car, sent him wide, and that was thank you very much, Lionel Gamay, back through the, the inside there to take that ninth place back. So Paul Ilbrink, once again, having to do all the hard work and catching up, and then trying to overtake for that ninth place. Yeah, we, we've seen several cars now spin over that, uh, or almost spin, as we're getting a fight now between Lopez and Perez, and Perez has, he's right on the gearbox when he comes down to, into Kumho, and uh, it's going to be interesting to see, turn 13 here is where you need to get the run, you need to enter wide, you need to hit the apex, you need to be able to stay flat as much as you can, he's going to run out wide, and I think he got himself the run, he's going to be taking a look at the inside going down into turn 1 here, I think, he's very, very close, as close as he's been yet, and... This actually, note this lap, he's going to decide to stay out of it. Yeah, so uh, Jordan Lopez and, uh, and of course Matt Perez just working their way through the uh, the uh, back section of this track now, through 6, 7 and 8. And while still not able to uh, make any moves around here as uh, Lopez just runs out a little bit wide out of uh, turn 8 there. And, well, it's not really good. But, but Perez just... Drop back a little bit on this lap. He's dropped back to about 0.7 of a second, so he's not quite as close this time around. There are five laps remaining, and as you say, Martin Van Luzenod is already is way out from. He is 2.9 seconds ahead of uh, Polo Moai uh, with Sebastian Job still in that third place, but 4.3 seconds behind that second place driver. Uh, so you're not really going to see them move there. But uh, this battle still going on for this sixth place. Jordi Lopez Jr. and Matt Perez. Uh, Lopez Jr. that last lap did a 30.8 and Perez a 31.1. So we're uh, losing about three tenths of a second there, Perez, on that lap. Yeah, it's definitely not something he wants to do. Uh, he was able to get in that draft down the front straight. There was enough that he was able to, to bring that gap oh, back side up. By and side by side, turn one, David Jarvis and uh, Sebastiano uh, Filosa and they're still going side by side into two Jarvis has got the inside line here but he's going to have the outside into three and well he's locked up his run a bit wide there and that's going to allow Klaus Ellenbrand to have the run now so Filosa has made it through and Ellenbrand is now trying to get onto the gearbox of Jarvis Jarvis just making a little bit of a mistake there through three but he's now trying to keep in that draft of Filosa the car in front but uh, still having to hold back and he's in 12th place now so lost that one place yeah and that's never good I think we're gonna see this battle really kick off here in the closing laps we saw them be really really aggressive early and they sense have kind of calmed it down um, and I think once we get to the closing stage of this race we might see the side-by-side -side action throughout the middle part of the lap again as we're gonna, I'm gonna look back towards the battle between Perez and Lopez and again, Lopez has just stretched that gap out again throughout the middle stage of this lap. It'll be interesting to see what Perez is able to do down that front straightaway, whether or not he might be running a, a lower down for its rim, trying to be able to pass going into one. Oh, Jarvis made, uh, just ran a little bit wide, couldn't get the power quite as good through Audi, but uh, able to hook up turn 12 really well. So I wonder if he's running a little bit of a uh, different downforce setup to uh, Klaus Ellenbrand. And as you say, there's so many different varieties of setup you can do, and you look behind them. Yeah, Moreno and uh, Sayandre have uh, caught up to this pack, so because of all the battling that's going on between these three, it's allowed those two to catch up in uh, 14th and 15th. Yeah, if they keep uh, staying like this, this battle between three is going to turn into a battle between five. We have Julian Rodriguez, Moreno, and, uh, and Sal Andres. Sal Andres is really one of the uh, the very, very fast drivers in that Star Mazda. And basically, they're there. This is a five-car battle at this point. Um, and really, what 
what I want to see here happen is Sebastian Pelosa needs to be able to run clean here to the rest of this race and not make a mistake. Because if he makes a mistake, he's going to be under threat by four cars. It isn't his chance now to where he can just check out. He's already started to stretch a gap over the car of David Jarvis, who's currently under threat from Kel uh, Klaus Ellenbrink. Yeah, absolutely. I think all this pressure on uh, David Jarvis is allowing Falosa to make this little bit of a gap here. He's got about a point six of a gap at the moment, and he is trying to pull away from them, but uh, David Jarvis doing a good job trying to keep up with them as they head towards the Audi S now. And once again, we've got two laps remaining in this race. Uh, it's Martin Van Lusenau who's going across the line, 2.8 seconds ahead of second place man Polo Moa with job in third place. But it's this battle here for 11th, 12th, 13th, 14th and 15th that, uh, that really is the closest battle at the moment because Lopez and Perez have uh, pretty much just settled for the time being. It's these four, so um, well the car behind has dropped back, Cy Andre has dropped yeah, back. I was, I was actually just about to cut in there, going through the Audi S. Oh, Jarvis! For Jarvis is really Jarvis is barely making a move. No, he's, he's really run wide into Tarzan, and that's allowed Ellenbrook to pull through on the inside. Jarvis under pressure now from Moreno. Moreno trying to look all the way around the outside there of Hugenholtz. Not able to uh, make that move stick, but he's got the better run now as they go through 4, 5, and into 6. And, uh, well, Jarvis having to do a sterling job trying to hold Moreno back. But here comes Moreno down the inside into 6. We've seen people try and make that move stick. It's not worked again. It's not, as we've been saying, all race. It's not really an overtaking spot, but Moreno, he can see those two ahead of him pulling away, and he's trying to think, I need to get past as soon as possible to tag on to the back of them. Now we're going to be coming to the white flag lap here. It's actually Martin Van Leeuwenhoord is actually coming to take the white flag right now. Um, just to update on Sale Andre, he, he almost spun going through the Audi S, which is why we see him not on the back of that battle anymore. Um, and he's several seconds back, and uh, we're really going to need to watch Julian here. Oh, is there side by side? Oh, I was really close. It was uh, good work from uh, Julian Rodriguez uh, Moreno to hold back from that nutmeg contact. But you do believe that he's getting a little bit desperate here to try and get the move. Jarvis runs wide. He loses control there. And that's allowed Moreno through. Uh, well, all that pressure is told in the end. And David Jarvis now down to that 14th place. Certainly great pressure uh, put on there by Julian. As we look back towards the front of for this battle between Lopez and Perez, this pretty much got itself situated. Perez is there, however, he's about half a second back, and it's going to be very, very difficult for him to be able to make a move here. I believe they're coming up on lap traffic of Arjun de Vries. Actually, no, that's a car for position that's only a couple seconds up the road, but again, they're, he's somewhat out of it. Looking to the front, though, Martin Van Leeuwenhoord, he's coming up to the Audi S's now, and really, unless he makes a, makes a mistake, he's got this in the bag, Paul. Yeah, absolutely. 3.4 second lead he's got as he heads into this Audi S. The right and then the tight left around. It's pretty much 180 degrees around that left-hander. And now as you head towards turn 12, Kuma, and, well, he has pretty much got this in the bag. He just has to make it cleanly through 13 now, but we've seen people make mistakes on the exit of 13, but around he comes. And Martin Van Loosenord, for the second week in the row, is going to win the race on Friday night primetime on Racebot TV, streaming on iRacing Live. Fantastic work from Martin Van Loosenord. Not the uh, not the photo finish that we had last week, but uh, Paula Moore coming in in second place with Sebastian Job coming across the line now in third. Kem uh, Bullock Bassey in fourth place with Ian David in fifth place. Jordi Lopez Jr. in sixth with Matt Perez in seventh. They were all able to sort themselves out. David Jarvis has got to Cy Andre right behind him but it's going to be a little bit too late for Andre. Jarvis is going to have to go defensive as they go across the line here and well across the line they go and it was only uh, it was only six hundredths of a second between them as they went across the line. So really close there from David Jarvis, but ended up finishing in 14th. Yeah, definitely a good uh, good late race battle there. Um, it's unfortunately we we lost a lot of those front runners um, at the early stage of this race. That could have been a very very good finish. But again, very very well driven by Martin Van Leeuwenhoorn to be able to get himself uh, out to that three and a half or so second lead and be able to really hold it once that early pressure was gone and once he well once he got himself to the lead as we saw him qualifying in P two. So yeah, so uh, what we'll do is we will take you through your results. And uh, well, Martin Van Loosenord is the man who won this race. 3.4 seconds ahead of Paul Amour. 
in second place. Sebastian Job finishing in third with uh, Ken Bolt-Bassett in fourth. Only about two seconds, two and a half seconds behind, so uh, good work from him again. Ian DeVried in fifth with Jordi Lopez Jr. in sixth. Matt Perez pushing him all the way to uh, to the end, but not able to get that position into seventh. Uh, Bruno Ducamo, hey, we saw him have that incident earlier on in the race, but able to finish eighth. Lionel Gamay in ninth, able to hold off Paul Olbrink, who finished in tenth place. Sebastiano Filfosa in 11th place with Klaus Ellenbrand in uh, 12th. Julian Rodriguez Moreno in 13th with David Jarvis in 14th. Sayandre in 15th place with John Allert in 16th. Rob Reed finished in 17th place with Joel Goez in 18th place. One lap down was uh, Norbert Sulzer in 19th place and then the drivers who didn't finish. Jürgen Frank, Tony Repsard, uh, Stein Schotthurst, who we saw battling for the lead early on in this race. Sam Sutton, Justin Brunner and Simon Povey all getting involved in that uh, first corner incident. And well, Randy, it wasn't the uh, wasn't the thrilling edge of seat stuff that we had last week, but it was still a good race here. Yeah, it was certainly a good battle. And uh, really, we saw some better battling down to the... Uh, the bottom part of the grid than we did last week. Um, some things I want to talk about. Showhorse, I think, could really be a threat to win one of these races later on in the season. However, he really needs to just keep up his consistency. We saw him, uh, I think he got a little anxious uh, trying to stay close, trying to get the lead, and it cost him uh, cost him his position several times and eventually cost him the race. I think if he can keep himself calm, he could be a very, very huge threat here in the future. Absolutely, and next week we see the uh, the uh, Formula Renaults go on to the Phillip Island circuit, which should be uh, well a slipstream heaven there, uh, certainly down the uh, front straightaway there. Uh, we could see plenty of action once again there, Andy. Yeah, there's certainly uh, a lot of action that can happen at Phillip Island. You have the high speed stretch with turn one, and then really once you get through turns three and down into turn four, it starts turning very very tight. Um, so really, in, in a lot of ways, somewhat like Zandvoort stylistically, with the with the long front straightaway for good uh, for good for good passing, and then getting the tight uh, the tight run through the middle of the circuit, Paul. Absolutely. So that's it for uh, our second Friday night prime time here on Race Spot TV streaming on iRacing Live. Matt Van Loosnord, it's two from two here in the iRacing Formula Renault 2.0 Championship. And we'll see you once again next week at uh, quarter to uh, nine for yet another exciting race in this Formula Renault 2.0 Championship. I've been Paul Smith with, from Randy Chenworth and from uh, Hugo Luis. Not to forget our, uh, our good friends and one Designs and Isfan Below as well for their help in bringing this broadcast to you. It's Good night from all of us here at Sandboard. Goodbye.